really excited to be here, but a little nervous. And actually, I am from, uh, thank you, from, uh, from the suburbs, but I have lived in West Philly. Yeah. So the thing about me, though, is that the, uh, what's it called, the, the Clark Park Farmer's Market, I never actually made it while they still had eggs, because I slept in so late that I never actually got there. But all the good stuff was there, so. <laughs> so. So that's my family who can verify that I'm, I tend to be late for lots of things. Which is, um, the, I guess the story I'm going to tell today of, <laughs> of how I got here for the holidays. Because I am home for the holidays. Because, um, thank you. Because like, I think it was Cecily, I've also been to grad school. I recently just finished. <laughs> In Orlando, Florida, it was not grad school for Disney. It was actually for acupuncture and uh, alternative medicine, which is really exciting. And uh, not, not applause there. Yeah, health food and no alcohol. Um, which is part of the story. I'll get there. So um, being a person who should know that uh, she can be late for things sometimes, or all the time, I found the new um, Frontier Airlines, which is a uh, really discount right now. I don't know if any of you have flown to or from Philly with Frontier. They're super cheap, and they trick you because they charge a la carte for all of your luggage. Um, so anyway, I got into Frontier, and they had a 7.20 a.m. flight that got into Philly at 9.45. Because I'm here to help my family, and we're going to decorate for Christmas, and the place is a mess. It still has pumpkins on the front porch. Got to get those out of there, get rid of Thanksgiving stuff, and get some Christmas lights up. So I'm thinking, okay, all day. I'm really helpful. I'm a grad graduate. I can help you guys set up for Christmas. I can do lights. I'm practical. I've lived in West Philly. Like, I can do this. So, um, <laughs> so I wake up around 5.30 for snooze. 5.45, 6. I try to get out the door, and I'm like, okay, it's 6, it's 6 a.m., I can still make it. If we leave right now, we live close to the airport. It's Orlando International. Like, all right, and my boyfriend's helping me because he's going to drive me in my car, and then I'm going to go. But the thing is that um, because I'm a West Philly type of person, the place where I live in Orlando is a big house with several roommates. It's a communal house, you could say. And so um, <laughs> they're not exactly West Philly, so everyone has a car. And we have one driveway. So, we're usually pretty good. We usually communicate and we know our schedules. And for some reason this day, no one knew my schedule. And this was very stressful. So, um, because I'm practical and resourceful and graduated grad school, I'm like, all right, we got this. All right, baby, back me up. I can reverse. I know how to parallel park. You trust me. I'm from Philly. I got this. I got this. Okay. And I back up from the front spot in front of the, the garage sideways out in front of this car, this way, like this, for like about five minutes, and then pull sideways across the neighbor's lawn onto their driveway around the corner here, and I'm like, yes, okay, get in, baby, airport, let's go, okay, okay, so we're on the, on the drive to the airport. Now, the thing about Orlando International is that they have two terminals, A and B. So you'd think it wouldn't be that hard to figure out which terminal Frontier Airlines with all the signage. I don't know how I forgot to read that morning, as well as my boyfriend. So we ended up at Terminal B, which was incorrect. And at this point, I was like... Okay, well, I can still make it. I did this short pack, and I packed really well, and I only have, like, my, like, my layers and all my stuff, and so we're going to make it. Let's go. It's carry-on. Let's go. I can do this. And then um, I got in, and I got to the ticket counter, and the lady was just clearly like, this is not happening. So, so you'll be on the 440 flight. You know, here's the fee. And I'm like, that's cool. I'm going to make money. I'm a grad student. I can afford fees. <laughs> that's for my family and actually it was the best 
I think like nine hours <laughs> a day because I've been really, really busy. I've been today. really busy. That was yesterday. <laughs> and so I spent between approximately like 8 a.m. ish until about 4.40 p.m. at the Orlando <laughs> International <laughs> Airport. People watching. And being uh, a student of a grad of a school that, you know, preaches like health and well-being, I just looked around at how awfully unhealthy everyone looked and judged them as I sat for my seat, charging my phone. But no, I was actually just people watching and it was nice and there were Christmas trees set up and, and it was really cool, like watching like families and lots of little kids and different versions of strollers and so many different people, like a lot of diversity, like people wearing a lot of different kinds of things and... And I was really cool, like, watching people, like, take selfies of each other and, like, oh, I'll take the picture of the three of you, sure, and, like, people sharing. It was just kind of cool to just not have anywhere to be. I couldn't go anywhere. My car was gone. My flight's not there. And, um, and so I was sitting there in, in, the, in the Hyatt atrium where they actually, from 11 to 2, they had a um, guitarist playing Christmas <laughs> melodies. <laughs> It was one of those guys with like a guitar that's like very sort of Spanish-y and kind of cool. And, and then he took a break and it was just a recording of the same thing. <laughs> and anyway, I looked over at one lady next to me and she was kind of... So in West Philly, you know like everyone rides a bike, they have those socks with like little... Like they're, they're, they're particular socks. If you know them, you know them. And they have like little designs and it's like... She had coffee cups on her, so I'm thinking... Okay, you know, she likes coffee like everyone else here. The Starbucks line is moving much faster than the security line. So, um, I'm a friendly person, so I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Hey, so you like coffee? That's cool. <laughs> she's like, and she's sipping her coffee, and she's kind of like, yeah, I'm like looking at the tree and listening to the guitarist. And I realized I was sitting there, I'm um, using my training for all this, like, you know, I've taught people how to like get sugar out of their diet and how good that is for your circulation and your health. And I realized I was kind of like still busy in my own head looking at this lady and her sticky cinnamon and her coffee, <laughs> thinking like, oh, man, your arteries are just so sad. I could probably help you. I wasn't in a flight today. So anyway, um, I quit judging her as I talked to her just a, a minute more. And I was like, OK, cool. So you like coffee? And she was like really calm, like unlike anybody else at the airport. And she was just like, yeah, you know what? I actually haven't drank coffee in 15 years. But today, you know, I'm traveling home for Christmas. And I think she was like in her 50s or 60s, like grandma age, you know. Probably some nice grandkids she was heading towards. And she said, you know, I just, I was here and I just decided to, go for the coffee and the, and the Cinnabon, and I said, screw it. I'll probably regret it tomorrow, but and she just had this look of joy in her face. And that lady kind of just like, I already had kind of started to chill out from grad school and stress, and, and she kind of just made me realize, like, yeah, like, screw it, have a sticky bun out again. And if you get the chance, just get up on stage and tell a story. <laughs>